live from Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. I was going to fiddle. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. I'm joined by Pat Waters. She is the Chief Talent Officer of ServiceNow and Pat Terigny, who is the Senior Vice President HR Global Shared Services at Magellan Health. Pat and Pat, thanks so much for, for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. It's so great We're to excited. be here, Rebecca, thank you. Well, you were both on the main stage this morning talking about Magellan's, Magellan Health ServiceNow journey. It, you, we started talking about a, health, a personal health scare that you had, Pat, mm -hmm. that really changed the way you think about the world of work and the, the employer's role, role right. in that. Can you tell, tell our viewers a little bit more about it? Oh, I'd it? be happy to, Rebecca. So obviously, you know, I had been working and had taken some time off to start and raise my family. And when I went back to work, I started to feel unwell. And it took about two and a half years for me to finally get an answer. I had searched from any doctors and et cetera. But, but, this, but literally one day I was rushed to a hospital emergency room. After a few days I was diagnosed with stage 3B colon cancer and I was told I had probably about a 3% survival chance. So at that time I faced four years of surgery and hospitalizations and chemo and radiation. And of course during all this time you're hearing the probable outcomes and the statistics but what I truly focused on was my purpose, which was my family. I had two small children and they needed me and I needed to be there for them. And so I learned a lot of lessons during that time and I think anyone who goes through that would say that. But the two things that have really stuck with me is knowing my purpose and leading with empathy. And it's truly changed how I live, how I work, how I interact with other people. And I think it's made a huge difference in what I do every day. Pat, you're, the, the, what, she, what Pat was just talking about, the, the leading with empathy and, and the finding your purpose, these are two of the things that are just central to the culture at ServiceNow. Yes. Can you describe a little bit more for our viewers what, 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 how you view this, this sort of purpose-driven life? Hmm. Uh, for me and for the company, it's, as essential to our success as our customers. So I know that purpose-driven companies outperform those that don't have a purpose. And I know from a talent brand and how we recruit and retain talent, if their personal purpose is aligned to the company purpose, not only do you get higher engagement, higher productivity, but that impacts our customers and they have higher engagement, higher SAT. So it's great business. It's something that I think creates a competitive differentiation and it's something that our employees seek as an employer. So it's just something that I totally believe in and so does our company. So talk a little bit about Vern. Well, first of all, what does Vern stand for? Oh, I love Vern. <laughs> Everyone loves Vern. Vern stands for the Virtual Employee Resource Network. And a couple of things that I would probably want to say about that is number one, you don't see HR in there at all because it's about the employee. This is, a way, this is a way that we are helping our employees fundamentally change how they work and how they engage with us. Um, the reason I think Vern works is our employees voted on that name. So we, we had a whole campaign to launch Vern and we offered up four different names and our employees voted. And when Vern won, we created a Vern persona and uh, you know everything else that goes with that and he's just become part of our team. So what does Vern do? Well, Vern is really sort of the, it, it took the place of our call center. Vern is a way for our employees to learn information, answer their basic questions, and learn to work in new ways. And it helps, and it's basically a consumerized HR product. If an employee can use Google or shop online, they can use Vern. It's very simple, it's easy and fun, and truly Vern has become a part of our team. So we don't have a call center anymore. We don't use email to answer questions. Our employees know that Vern is there for them 24-7. They have a question, ask Vern. Exactly. Yes. Turn to Vern, that's our motto. <laughs> I love it. So, Pat, thinking about this, this empathic way of leading, how would you describe what it really means when it comes to HR. I mean, how, how mm -hmm. you had said before, it really is a competitive differentiator. It is. And that, that, that if you're happier at work, you're going to do better at work, you're going to be more energized, you're going to then provide better service to your customers. But how can companies 
how can they build a culture of empathy? By listening. I think that when Pat and I were talking over dinner and I talked to my peers, companies that win listen. And they listen to their customers and they reverse engineer back to their products and services. Great cultures listen. And our employees are going to tell us what's working, what's not working. And if we capture those data sets, those moments, we give them the information, we give them the tools. They are joyful, they're more productive. There's a stickiness that I can not only survive there, I'll thrive. And so by being empathetic, by seeing where the pain points are, by seeing what gets you joyful and measuring those things and turning my dials accordingly, that to me is a winning situation. We're at a point in time where we have five generations in the workforce all yes. at once. Can you describe what that's like from, from your company perspective, from talent management and HR, and how catering to these very different segments of people and of people who are, their comfort with technology is one thing, but also their phase of life. How, how do you do that? Well, I think, Honestly, there's this joyfulness, you use that word and I love that word, of how all these different generations really do work together and help one another. In a way, we're all learning from each other and we're not afraid to learn in front of each other. And that really makes a difference, I think. And I think there's just this mutual respect of we're all there to help each other and do the right thing for the company. And I think the empathy piece of it really comes across because when you truly understand one another in a way that you care and you're showing that, it's not about age anymore or anything else. It's that we're all people working together trying to do our best work and we're there for each other. To me, that's what it means. I, the only thing I would add to that is when you look at consumerization of the enterprise, when you look at seamless, what they call frictionless solutions, it demystifies the technology. Yeah. So if you have the older generations go, I've not used a bot or I don't know what machine learning is, I'm like, can you type in your question? I can do that. And if I serve you knowledge bites that I can digest that answers my question and move on with my life, that's yes. a gift. And so I think that if you make it more human, if you make it more approachable, then every generation appreciates that. And I also know that from my studies and from working in the Valley for a long time in tech, is that every generation wants the same thing. They want to be heard, they want to be appreciated, yep. treated respectfully, and know they can do their best work, that they matter. Mm -hmm. So Pat, you are relatively new to ServiceNow. You're from LinkedIn. Yes. Um, you are so committed to the company, you dyed your hair to match <laughs> the brand identity. <laughs> yes. What drew you to ServiceNow? I was a customer of ServiceNow while at LinkedIn. And my Goldilocks is a growth company, I'm a builder. I love creating culture and leading through change. And I also love geeking out with my peeps in <laughs> HR. Like, and so ServiceNow has a talent place. They are helping HR solve problems. And I get to geek out with them. I get to meet people like Pat and have a wonderful dinner and a great conversation. That feeds my soul. Mm -hmm. I don't think I am unique in the problems I'm facing and I copy shamelessly. I'm trying to steal Vern from her. <laughs> I, think, I think that's awesome. I want a Vern button. <laughs> I'm going to get uh, you one. Yes. And then the added sauce for me where I fell in love is when John Donahoe became the CEO and wanted my partnership to build an enduring, high performing, healthy company. And I'm like, sign me up. Mm -hmm. Talking about the culture of ServiceNow and Magellan Health, culture is so hard. It is, it is just one of those things that, it, it, or, or maybe it's not, maybe, maybe I'm making it out to be, but, but when you have large com uh, companies, dispersed employees, it's, it's sort of hard to always stay on message and to have everyone pulling in the same direction. How do you do it? I mean, what would you say you do at Magellan? I'm interested in how you, how you do it at ServiceNow too. Want to go first? I'll take a stab. Go ahead. <laughs> so, you got to think about where you're going, right? So what's your purpose? I'm going back to purpose. How do you serve the customer? Uh, what are those four key milestones that matter? And repeat, and I say rinse and then repeat. So everyone hears it. You know the top five goals in the company. And we talk about it all hands. We uh, refer to them in our in internal portal. We talk about them, we measure them. We tell the employees this is what we wanted to do, this is what we did or didn't do, this is what we're going to do next. 
and we're as transparent as we possibly can be. And the magic comes when every employee can look up and say, I made that goal happen. And when they start seeing those dots connect, yeah. they can't wait to connect more dots. And that's when the journey starts accelerating. That's when you get more you know, flywheel going in the organization where what I do is actually impacting profit, impacting customer success, impacting joy. And taking some ownership of yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Right, I agree. I think that when everyone sort of shares in that purpose and they understand what they do, how it affects that, it makes a huge difference. But I also think as an organization from a leadership perspective, if you model the behavior that you're seeking and you set your expectations really high for that, and that in a very sort of respectful way, when you see things that aren't right, you say something about it, the culture does start, start to shift. And you start to build this feeling of we're there, we're together, we have each other's backs, we treat each other with dignity and respect and honesty and openness and you can really start to just shift it almost organically. Great. Pat Terigny, Pat Waters, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a great conversation. Oh, thank, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you for having us. It's been great, thank you. Yes. We'll have more with theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow just after this.